So after we talked about the drums and the bass, uh, today's video is all about the guitars, the thins, the piano and finally the vocals. Uh, and if time's not running out, I'm gonna show you like my final touch, which I do on the tuba. So without further ado, let's start. So as a quick reminder, in case you missed the first part of the video, which you find the um, link, of course, in the description or probably somewhere in the video, um, here is how we come so far. We mix the drums completely and the bass guitar. So here are drums and bass uh, processed and then I will quickly disable or bypass the, uh, the processing. So you see how far we've come. So the idea is now that um, when I process the rest of the stuff, so the guitars and bring everything in, that um, I don't solo, um, which I, I mean, this stuff is already processed now, so I show you just what I did, but when I start to mix those tracks, I leave the drums and the bass as they are right now, because they are the um, fundamental tone and sound, which determines the feel of the song. So. Uh, we're going to start with the rhythm guitar, which kicks in in the verses. Uh, afterwards, we come to the the, um, the riff guitars um, that are happening in the chorus in the beginning. But let's start first with the rhythm guitar. So again, soloing the bass and the drums. Um, open up the processing here. So I'm going to um, start so what I did here, let me first check if I solo the riff guitar. Yes, so the riff guitar is coming in in the verse after the intro. Um, this is how it sounds without any processing. So here's the riff guitar. So um, it's obviously playing the same rhythm as the bass guitar, which gives the song a little drive, of course. Mm, I've panned the rhythm guitar to the left, as you probably hear when you're um, listening in good headphones and speakers. It's just because that I want to keep the center um, um, for the drums, kick, snare, the bass guitar and the vocals, of course. Um, so everything else is panned to the left to make just a little room for the driving part here, which is bass, drums and the vocals. So I started with, um, as for every channel, with the virginal channel uh, set on the 4KE mode, which is the SSL. Afterwards, um, I've put a, a compressor. The guitar is not um, um, has no hard distortion or uh, using an amp, it's like, like like the clean signal, which I like in this case. Probably add some delay and some reverb afterwards, but just to uh, control those little um, um, peaks that the sounds um, are from the from the string are coming. So uh, medium attack, almost fast release, um, just 2.5 ratio. It's just like taming down a little bit the transients of the guitar. Afterwards, with this EQ. Um, boosting quite a lot, 8 dB um, of uh, 5K and another 2.5 of 860. So it's a, this mid-range, um, usually on drums and on the vocals, you remove quite a lot of the, that area between 300 and 800. Um, so there is some room for the guitars and there's where the guitars sometimes have their, um, let's say their body and their character um, in the area between 500 and 1 kilohertz. So it's a great um, area to add some some frequencies here. I removed um, 300 something with almost 4 dB, doesn't sound good. And I um, high passed at up to 240 because I don't need any information in this guitar. Sometimes there are guitars that have some fundamental notes down in that uh, really low end, so 300 and below. For this guitar, as it's just playing the high notes here um, or the high chords, I didn't need anything below, so I just can high pass it and I, afterwards, because I added quite an amount of um, EQ here, I used the trimmer to bring down the overall volume. So uh, let me bring one by one after another, you see my mouse following along, first compressor, then the EQ.
Um, so afterwards, let's jump to the synth. We have two different synth parts here in the song. Um, one is for the choruses when it's getting louder, and one is for the uh, for the verses. Um, the one for the um, for the choruses in the intro um, is a little bit nasty and gritty, but adds a nice character to it. Um, and for the verses, it has like this atmospheric sound going on, um, typical synth part sound. So I didn't do much here. Let me bring in both. Um, as you see, um, I did nothing. Uh, as you see, I just couldn't remember. Just the virginal channel. Um, those synths are come usually from sample libraries, so they sound good already out of the box. And I didn't have the feeling that I need to do anything here. So uh, here are the synths in combination with um, the bass, uh, the riff guitar, and the drums so far. So uh, here's the synths from the beginning. Probably a bit loud, maybe. And now the second synth um, in the verse, which really um, adds this character to the vocals you will hear in a second. So now let's talk about um, the, the rhythm guitar one, as I call it here, um, and the double take. So the same uh, pattern um, um, two times um, recorded, uh, which is a common technique just to give the whole song a little bit of width. When I have a double take of the guitar, I usually pan them equally left and right. In this case, even 100% left and right. Um, it's a it's a decision you can do as an artist or a mixing engineer. Sometimes I do just 50% left and right. So bring them a little bit more to the front, but the same idea here for the riff guitar. I wanted to leave the, um, the, the, the center information just for kick, snare, vocals and bass. So I panned the rhythm guitars because they're um, played quite heavily, a lot of um, compression going on, a lot of distortion. Um, so I panned them hard left and right. So that's how they sound. And I bust them together to one, um, bus here, so this is first without any processing, and then I'll show you what I did. And hear how they sound in the chorus. So on the individual tracks, um, just um, in a queue here, um, I've added just 3.7 dB at 500 Hertz. This is what I talked about. Um, this area where you usually remove stuff from the drums and often from the vocals because you have this uh, radio like nasty sound. Um, guitars sometimes come to life here. So that's what I did on um, the one guitar. Uh, and on the other tar with, uh, a guitar is, um, is a common trick to separate them a little bit. Um, I reduced 5 dB on the exact same frequency. So a uh, frequency. So on the one I added 4 dB, on the other one I removed 4 dB, which gives a little bit more contrast. Sometimes when you have the exact same sound coming from both sides, um, sometimes they it get kind of a little bit muddy and mushy um, because they exactly sound the same. This is a little trick to um, add a little bit candy, as I would say. Um, it doesn't work when you, in my experience, when you work with six or eight guitars doubled, but if it's just two, it's a slight um, effect. Of course, you should use a frequency that's not nasty at all. Um, so um, that's the idea here, removing one um, 5 dB and the other adding exactly the same frequency again. And then I bust them together to this rhythm guitar um, where you see where I removed some of the very, very low ends and added just a sparkle on the top end with even two different EQs. This one, the FGA is an API style EQ, works great on guitars usually. Um, just like this was kind of like made on the fly while I was listening to the guitars to make them sit in the mix. So let me just bring them in here uh, with the virtual channel, of course. Um, so here are the guitars. And 
again, uh, bypass all of them, just back and forth, one A and B. So I wanted to bring out that um, distorted sounds uh, coming from probably the amps they used for the recording. Um, it's not very much low end going on, but uh, as the drums and the bass line already give me that low end, um, I really want to make sure that every instrument has its own frequency range where I put it into. So uh, the guitar, the final stuff that's left before we come to the vocals finally is the piano. And in this nice build up and bridge section, there's a piano coming on, which is a nice addition to the overall sound. Um, it's a sampled piano, probably it's a stereo file, so I left it center because um, the way they recorded it and used the samples, the piano is like already has like some reverb going on, it's a little bit in the background. So um, on the piano, again, virtual channel and just a compressor, which I'm going to show you in a moment because the initial attack of the keys um, were a little bit too, uh, let's say, aggressive on the transient, so I just wanted to tame down um, the first initial transient of the key, uh, piano keys here. So I used a fairly fast attack, not the fastest one, and um, medium to slow release, just like to level out this initial um, um, strike on the keys. So here's first without, let me jump where the piano is playing in. So here we go. Of course I should solo it now. So this last note of the three uh, was a little bit too aggressive. And now with the compressor. So you see, um, when you see the needle of the compressor, um, it's not reacting just like on the third note. Um, it's tucking down by 4 or 5 dB. It's just like, to, and uh, as the release is fairly slow, it's, it, like, it extends the tail of the sound a little bit more. So that's the, sometimes the use of compress or compression, not just to control the peaks, which is the original idea of a compressor, but playing with the release settings sometimes, and of course the ratio and all the settings, you can really um, shape the, the tail of the sound. Um, in this case, it's subtle, but um, I was thinking about uh, that. Um, I didn't want to use the fastest attack to kill the transients completely, um, but just like leveling it out. So let's hear like 10 to 15 seconds for the whole piano part here. So I didn't want the piano to really pop out, uh, which you could do because there's not much stuff going on. But for me, the way they recorded it, and this is what you have to expect when you mix songs for others, um, usually the artists, uh, the singer or the bands, they had an idea when they recorded the stuff the way they did. And your job as a mix engineer is not to change, not always to, to change the song, the feet of the song but look at what's given to you and try to make it as sound as um, uh, best as possible. And that's what I tried to achieve here. So uh, finally, we have just the lead guitar, which uh, comes in in the second and final chorus. Um, so let's solo this uh, again. And as always, first, without any processing, let me bypass the plugins here. So this is the the lead guitar, as I call it, um, panned at 50% to the right, by the way, um, just like to give the op opposite direction from the riff guitar, which we panned to the left when you remember. So here's the lead guitar. <laughs> I probably need to add a lot of reverb and delay here for this lead guitar to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, maybe you can even pan it to the middle. Um, a lead guitar or a solo, which this is not really a solo, but usually a solo sometimes you pan during the solo in the middle because solo means that obviously no one is singing next to that. So you can pan it in the middle to make it stand out a little, a little more. This is just um, a, let's say, 
a lead guitar part which is not really played as a lead guitar um, if it makes sense for you. So the idea um, after the virtual channel on the SSL setting, um, similar thing to the um, to the rhythm guitars in the beginning, um, really reducing anything below 200. You heard that the guitar is really playing more the high note. However, um, added almost 9 dB on 330. So exactly that frequency where I removed a lot in the drums uh, and I was, uh, you will see I removed some on the vocals. So there was a little space here to fill in. And on this guitar, I felt the 300 um, was a little like dirty, but in a good way, um, give it some meat to the sound. I didn't remove anything you see here. Um, I just added another 3 dB on 1.3 kilohertz and a little bit of top and shine 2.6 at almost 10 kilohertz. Um, so this is how it sounds when I bring in the EQ. And as you heard, due to the pro processing, it, be it became a little bit louder. So I used the trimmer in the end, just like minus one dB to level it out. That's it. So before we come to the vocal, let's make a f um, like uh, um, a next A to B from the whole processing, all the guitars, bass, synth, piano, and the drums. Um, so you see how we've come, how far we've already come with the processing that we did so far. So let's jump to the um, intro, going into the verse, and I will jump uh, back and forth. <laughs> Okay, cool. So finally, the vocals. I will start with the lead vocals and then jump to the uh, background vocals. The track, as it uh, was provided to me, said it had just like one lead vocal and then background vocals. But the background vocals one and two, uh, which the um, the tracks were named after, are pretty much lead vocals for the chorus, um, doubled vocals. So um, I split up the processing here because um, due to the character of the song, because the verses are more melodic, romantic, atmospheric than the chorus. Um, I wanted to treat them differently uh, and will treat them differently in the further process with adding um, ambience and delay and all that stuff. So uh, here's the lead vocal first and foremost when it's coming in in the verse for the first time. So um, when I heard, when you hear the raw recording of the vocal, you hear it's really, really well sang and well recorded so not much dynamics going on um, i didn't have to fight against huge jumps in volume i had to cut something uh, when the singer was breathing a lot between phrases um, and you hit some some clicks and pops which is normal on a vocal performance but uh, other than that the vocal performance especially in the verses um, is really really good um, great recorded so here's the vocal without any effects so far Time to so that's the great idea here. He's almost whispering um, this, um, this, the verses, which is great. Um, which together with the the cool driving beat of the bass and the drums uh, makes the song so interesting. I think so. Uh, let's check what we did here. Uh, vocals usually, as you see, they need the most um, processing um, all, always. So let me bring in, because it's so important, one after another. So I started with this one. This is the FG73, which is a mic preamp, um, um, a Neve preamp, which adds some character to the vocal. And when you drive this knob here, the virtual drive, you will see this little bulb in the top sometimes um, um, lightening up, which means the signal gets distorted, but in a good way. And I usually I try to play with that. So like at the loudest part, um, sometimes the light is a little bit, so a little bit distortion kicks in and just like tuck it a bit a little bit. So I'm on the edge of um, getting the vocal distorted, but this is kind of like the sweet spot for me. 
Um, afterwards, so I'm emulating a classical recording process from an um, analog preamp into the console, again on the SSL. And then afterwards, um, the EQ. Um, I removed, you see, 350. That's what I talked about when we talked about the guitar. This was where really um, a bulky, nasty sound was going on in his voice. Um, I removed anything below 105. Um, his fundamental note was 160. That's the reason I added something here, uh, 2.5 dB, just like a male voice, usually in that range, just to give it a little bit body and um, don't want to thin it out. Some top end uh, shine um, at uh, 12 and a little bit 1.1 on 2.5 kilohertz. This is a critical area sometimes for, in general, 2.5, 3, 2 kilohertz. This is the area where we as humans are most sensitive to. So you really have to be careful what you dial in here. And some um, vocals I remember, I removed quite a lot in that frequency range, but because if you boost too much here, the, the, the vocal jumps out of the speaker, but not always in a pleasant way. So you have to be careful here. And afterwards, a compressor started again with a preset and then adjusted it to, um, to the track here. I didn't need to go too crazy here with the compression for good reason. So I just used the compressor to add a little bit of character and to level it out like really the, the last 10%, as I said, um, the recorded, the vocals were uh, good recorded. So I didn't have to do that much. So um, let's start one after another. And in the end, of course, the trimmer, um, because I added some gain. So I uh, reduced it in the end. Time takes the sun illuminates the hills and I sit in spite, waiting, watching. So you hear the vocal gets overall a little warm and like a little bit more round. Um, kind of like a little bit, I don't know. It's hard to say, of course, I already know and, and think of what I do to the, um, to the ambience. It needs a little bit of ambience. It's too dry right now, but um, this far I'm quite heavy. So let's do a final AB when you see me here in the top right corner to um, bypass the whole processing so we can listen what this whole chain did to the vocal. It's really funny for me that the thing that I hear the most is the removal of those 300 something area, uh, which was really nasty in his voice and covered a little bit of um, the nice shine. Um, so basically I just added a little bit of lower and a little bit of higher end um, and make the vocals jump out a little bit more. The problem with vocals always is when you add compression, um, you bring out sibilance, so um, sharp S's and T's and pops. Um, so you need to use a de-esser usually um, because the compression really brings that out. Um, on a hardly sung vocal, like when really one is one screaming, it's even uh, more complicated to tame that. Sometimes I use two different uh, de-essers or sometimes even three in the end. In this case, I thought I just need one, um, which is again from the Steven Slate pack. Um, is the um, a Iosis uh, E2 de-esser. Um, great, smooth sounding de-esser. Again, started with a preset. Um, which is called male singing, and then adjusted some knobs with the amount sensitivity, the dry wet control. So just like to find the balance here, what fits to this vocal. So let's hear, um, especially I think here in the second phrase where some S's are. As the sun. As the sun. Um, so this part here. So this is with um, without first. So I um, want you to listen to the S's. As the sun. It's almost a little bit too much I hear right now, so let's bring down the amount just like a tiny bit. So I get it out. So now the chorus vocals um, on the individual tracks, um, I process them differently because they are recorded differently. Um, it's two different harmonies um, doubled. I started, like the first idea was to pan them a little bit left and right, but I decided to put both in the middle um, because this like really gives some, um, some grit. So the first one here, again, same approach, um, preamp slightly up to distortion, virtual channel, the compressor, 
and then the EQ where I did similar moves because it's the same singer so you had the same problematic frequency here at 360, 350, something like that. Um, so here's, um, I will show you, and the second one, similar approach, preamp, virtual console, uh, compressor, and then EQ. So let me just enable those and jump to the... Um, So, but of course, afterwards, I brought everything, uh, both vocals, into this bus, which is called Lead uh, Chorus uh, Bus. Um, I use this great guy, it's the FG Bomber. I still haven't really understood what this is actually doing. Uh, it's, it reacts kind of like a transient design or something like that. Um, it, it makes really drums pop out, but um, this preset here, which I used uh, already sometimes, which is called Vocals 3D. Again, I need to adjust, of course, the settings, but it's really kind of like, I don't know really what it's doing, um, but it doesn't matter because it sounds great. Um, it makes the vocals really jump out and stand out without making them harsh or too too much transience or too, adding too much harshness. Um, it's just like an overall vitamin um, treatment or something like that. So it's really amazing. So listen to the vocals here when I bring this guy in. Of course, there's a little bit of um, volume jump here, 0.5 dB, but you will hear the difference here. And of course, um, the same de afterwards with slightly adjustments um, because it's the same vocal. So here without, uh, with the de -esser. Don't you see? It's the elephant in the room. I can probably bring the volume a little bit up here. Don't you see? It's the elephant in the room. Is that And then finally, the background vocals, um, two different parts of background vocals, uh, one which come in first in the second and the third chorus, just as the lead guitar, and then uh, the final background vocals, another harmony vocals, which uh, come into the end to create a great effect when it's um, uh, singing back and forth. Um, panning perspective, I panned both uh, 65, 66% left and right, so completely left and right. Um, but it kind of like it embraces the, the lead vocals a little bit with that. And in the end, the last um, uh, harmony vocals, your background vocals, I penned uh, hard left and right. Um, it creates a great effect, just like you have the impression um, as if other guys are singing or like um, I want them to be a little bit in the background. And I will show you what I mean here when I go to the third chorus, play it through until the outro. So you hear the difference um, between the common background vocals and then the background vocals in the end. And from the processing, um, again, preamp, virtual channel, um, a compressor to level it out. And then I use those two guys, um, which you usually can add great uh, air and shine and earth, so low end. But I just used the high cut and low cut filter. So I removed everything below 160. And I removed everything above 7.3K. And this is when you remember my first video when I said that high frequency determine how much stuff is up front. So um, for background vocals, this is a common trick which I use a lot when you want to have the background vocals a little bit more in the background, just remove uh, high frequency. So start with maybe 12 or 13 uh, kilohertz and then slowly go down with, um, so I used a 60B um, slope here, um, 60B per octave, um, so really gentle, but when you bring down the high frequency, um, you will slowly hear that the vocal, um, because they are, have no high information anymore, they are slowly pushed in the background. So uh, you don't need to overpost them here. This, uh, here um, you don't need to spend, in case background vocals are really needed for that song, in this case, um, I didn't want to overprocess them, so just compression to level them out a bit, and then use the uh, the filters to to push them in the background. So uh, let's listen now to the background vocals as well. Um, and now I can um, unsoul everything because now we are playing everything. So let's start here in the third chorus, going into the outro, and you will hear the two different uh, background vocal parts. Don't you Is everybody fine? 
So of course, um, especially on the vocals, um, I will need to work on automation um, to adjust like the, the different, like writing the vocals in the chorus to make them a little bit louder and the verse a little bit quieter, um, playing around with effects like delay and reverb. So this is of course needed on the vocals, but so far I'm happy with the results. So before we come to that, um, I showed you already where I all started with uh, the virtual mix bus. Everything's going through this processing on the SSL um, e-channel setting. Um, after I processed everything and I'm happy with the sound, I opened another uh, compressor here, which is the FG Red, which is a emulation of um, a Focusrite compressor, which is used, I think, famous for Chris Lord LG uses this a lot. Um, I Remember, I started often just like by throwing in a compressor already from the first instance before I processed, but I kind of like changed my um, process here a little bit. Um, I didn't want to rely too much on a compressor. Uh, often you find yourself when you start with a compressor on your two bus, mix box, however you call it, um, it sounds great from the beginning because a compressor like gives some energy and some glue, but I felt sometimes what shouldn't happen that when you de disable or bypass the compressor that the whole track falls apart. So um, try to use compression on the tracks, maybe using parallel uh, compression or something like that, and don't rely too much on the final uh, compressor you use on your on your two bus. Um, and don't overdo this. Usually when a song is sent out to mastering or mastered by your own, you will take care of that as well. So I don't want to um, bring up uh, or compress here like 540B um, or add too much gain. It's just like really the final um, control um, or the police to kind of like controlling the overall level of this of the um, of the sound and just like bringing everything a little bit together and you will see that this compressor is just maybe tucking down one to two db uh, overall which is enough for my case mm, um, it's just like blinging bringing all the tracks together when you took care of your balance uh, during the mixing and all of the different tracks you shouldn't use a compressor to bring everything too much together um, I'd rather recommend to do bypass the compressor again go back to your to your mix or to the tracks and try to fix the problems if there are any occurring um, in the mix and not only to us so this is just like for overall glue so Again, let's go to the verse um, and a little bit into the chorus so you will hear what this compressor is doing. Uh, by the way, the, the settings, just 2.0 ratio, sometimes I even go for 1.5. Fairly slow attack because I didn't want to kill the transients. Um, again, no high pass filter because I want the kick drum to uh, trigger this compressor as well. Adding a little bit of drive here um, and that's pretty much it. And finally, um, no mix uh, can live without that, at least uh, for me, is the virtual tape machine. So everything recreating this analog uh, process, um, everything's running through a console in this case, even it's virtual. Um, and in the end, uh, it's printed onto tape. Um, so um, the Slate one is great. I use the 15 IPS mode, um, half inch, two track machine. So this adds even more low end uh, than the two inch 16 track uh, with a 30 IPS uh, speed. So this is really like the, the low end setting as I call it. I'm driving the input quite hard, but I liked what this did to the song. So you will immediately hear when I, let's first start bypass and I bring it in. This always amazes me how what this does to the overall sound. And finally, uh, what I do on the mix bus, um, on the output, I just use a software and plugins to control my mix every now and then. Um, often I use reference tracks, which I can't use here because otherwise I'm going to run into copyright issues. So tonal balance control from Isotope is just for me to double check. Uh, you can choose different genres here. Uh, in this case, I picked rock. 
And what you see here is um, like a typical EQ curve from typical rock songs. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to try that your song fits exactly into this area, but it gives you a good, let's say, double check if you are far beyond um, a typical genre-based EQ um, or frequency response. So when I play the song here and going into the chorus where everything is happening, you will see that I'm pretty happy with the balance here. Um, those curves are based, um, regarding to Isotope, on thousands of different songs, genre-based. So this is kind of like an average curve frequency-wise, and you can, for me, it's just good to double-check. So you see, uh, it's quite okay. Uh, maybe I have a little bit too low, uh, too much high end, um, and I'm missing a little bit here in the um, in the low mids. But I can take care of that during the mixing process. I will add delay and reverb and all that stuff. So there will be stuff uh, coming into that um, song anyway. So right now, I'm quite happy. And of course, I use Insight. Um, it's just like to take control of the volume. I mean, I'm so far we're in the mixing stage, not running into problems, but just this list just on my output to see like the stereo image and the overall um, loudness of um, the track. So, uh, guys, uh, let's do. It's time for a final AB. Um, this is how we come so far, and I will just play the song from the beginning and then start to constantly. A B um, the whole processing of the whole song so far I would say we are at around 80 85 percent um, I would say at least for me the next video is probably just about the candy um, the cherry on the top just like to add those um, this reverb and delay and maybe distortion and some automation but so far the mix is for me done from a mix perspective um, and EQ and compression perspective um, so here's a B uh, you will see on the screen when I bypass the plugins. So you get the point. Um, what do you think? Um, do you think the mix has become better? Um, I hope so. Um, I still need to do some work. As I said, the last 10% are usually the hardest, uh, where you can make the most mistakes. So I'm pretty curious on my own if I get this uh, track right. So far, I'm happy. Um, again, a long video. Uh, thanks to everyone who uh, made it until the end. I really appreciate that. If you have any comments, as always, just leave a comment below. I highly appreciate every reaction from you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic week making music and see you next time. Bye bye.